Hello everyone, so thank you for logging in and welcome to the first MFS um, webinar. So we're going to go through a short market update in regards to the property sector and then on to the live Q&A with our senior underwriters. Um, as you can see, Richard is currently in the top right of the screen. It does say that he's Tiba Raja, that is not correct. Um, so that's Richard D'Souza, he's going to be taking us through the market update. Um, so please feel free to ask questions as we go along, but obviously we will address all of those at the end of the presentation. Um, if you have any other questions, pop them in the Q&A or in the chat and we can, we can sort those out at the end. Um, I will apologise in advance for any technical issues. Uh, this is obviously the first webinar that we have done. So if there are any issues, then we will try and sort those as we go along. Um, so sort of without any further ado, we will get started. And I will pass over to Richard for the market update. Hi everyone, I'm Richard D'Souza, Senior Underwriter at Market Financial Solutions. I'm going to take you for a very quick update on what's been going on so far through the COVID-19 period. And we will then open up some questions from you guys listening. Um, myself and Scott, our other Senior Underwriter, will be answering those for you. Coronavirus or COVID-19 is posing one of the most significant social and economic challenges uh, faced by the UK since World War II. Uh, now, this is a very scary statement, but it's obviously important that we do face the challenges that are coming. However, we think there are reasons to be cautiously optimistic about the way we can recover in the property market following the pandemic. We can use the current government measures, past events, current trends and market research to paint a picture of the market moving forwards throughout the rest of the year into 2021 and more long term. You will have heard a lot already about the comparison between GFC and events happening now. However, a clear difference is that uh, the banks are in a position to help this time. And even with the banks not in a position to help in the GFC, house prices actually rose an average of 18% in the UK in the 10 years following. The main parallel here is that if prices do drop an estimated 5 to 10%, then we are likely to recover over the longer term. Also, some property investors, as they did 12 years ago, will, will be looking for undervalued properties during this time based on the historic performance of the property. The government has taken steps to try and mitigate the potential issues for all business, uh, businesses across the UK. You'll have heard most of these on the news and for the latest focuses are, are on driving innovation and making sure that loans are 100% government backed. It is worth noting that these measures will allow businesses in the property market as well as others to survive and will have a knock on effect across the sectors. It's also clear that this injection of capital into businesses will allow for commercial properties to withstand the negative impacts of coronavirus on the high street. What will be interesting to see is whether commercial property housing offices loses any momentum now that so many firms realise they are able to operate remotely. Relief for borrowers has always been hitting headlines with mortgage payment holidays up for grabs. Also, a reduced interest rate, although only affecting about 11% of the population that are currently on track of mortgages, um, is making low-cost borrowing an option to investors on both residential and commercial properties at this time. So the property market in Q1 2020. It was actually looking very strong before the outbreak with house prices on the rise, according to both Nationwide and Halifax. In fact, house price growth increased 3.7% in April 2020, a month which was spent entirely in lockdown. There was also increased demand and we can take comfort in that we look, we, we, we look to how the market will react once this is over. As well as this, house builders uh, also noted an increase of demand for new properties in Q1. Uh, that will still need to be addressed. Chesson's also reported a rise of 31% in properties uh, coming onto the market in January and February. Whilst this is focused on London, it, it shows great sentiment. If a slight dip occurs, it is likely demand will return quick, quite quickly to Q1 levels. In a poll completed by Savills, 
60% of participants believed that mark, the market would recover in Q1, Q2, 2021, which brings us nicely into our next slide. Savills are still sticking to their five-year forecasts at this time. Uh, and as we know, um, Savills have been fan, ha, ha, fantastic market research experts, and we can therefore look to them when thinking about what might happen moving forwards. They also have said that whilst there may be uh, unpredictable price movements, they are confident um, in long-term recovery of property as, safe, as a safe haven asset. You can see here that house price growth is looking to be uh, much the same in London and Manchester over the next five years as it was in the 10 years post GFC across the UK. The challenge for those wishing to continue with their property investment plans during this time, uh, regardless of an initial dip in the market, is that long-term lenders may not be willing to fund like they were previously were. In fact, according to Bank of England's March 2020 Money and Credit Report, approvals on mortgages for house purchases have actually fallen 24%, which is interesting considering the new lower interest rate. It remains to be seen whether banks will lend on this lower rate, um, with this lower rate in mind, or whether mortgage approvals will drop further, and the lower rate isn't utilised by the borrowers. However, it's not all doom and gloom, as this is where specialist lenders such as ourselves can step, step in. Whether it's commercial, residential, buy to let or otherwise, we can look to step in for refurbishments, bridging a purchase and sale, buying at auction or simply filling the gap where long-term lender is being slow. Obviously at the moment, um, whilst we can use projections, etc., to guide our way, the future is uncertain. We're all waiting for the announcement today on whether lockdown is likely to continue. And if not, what the process of reopening the country looks like, which will obviously influence the market and how long uh, we are likely to dip for. Um, but, but we, for one, will continue to be cautiously optimistic. Uh, we will be doing another webinar in a few weeks, which will detail any new data from the market, so you can catch up again with us here. For now, we'll go through to the Q&A, where myself and Scott will be answering any questions you may have on bridging loans and how we are dealing with the current situation. Okay, so... Without further ado, we will put them on. So I'm just turning your um, videos on, Richard and Scott, and I'm unmuting you. Hopefully you can hear me. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Perfect. Okay, fine. So um, I guess, obviously, things are changing so quickly um, that it's it's kind of rolling with the punches and and all of that sort of thing. Something that we've seen quite recently with lots of different lenders is that they're doing desktop valuations and AVMs. Um, Scott, can you tell us a little bit about what we're doing um, with, with that? Are we doing that? What, what's the process? Yeah, yeah, sure. So for ourselves, we're not currently accepting AVMs or drive-by. Um, reason being from our own sort of lending perspective, we just feel it is too much of a risk at present. Um, however, I'm pleased to say that we haven't had any problems um, with valuations during lockdowns. Uh, luckily for us, we've got a large panel of valuers, um, and a lot of those values are still inspecting properties. And they're able to do so simply by sticking to the government guidelines um, of what is allowed. Obviously, they're being extra cautious, taking all the precautions necessary just to ensure it is safe to do so. Um, I'd also say, finally, we've actually seen a quicker turnaround time in getting valuation reports back um, over the last month. So for us, it's, it's business as usual. Okay, brilliant. And then we've got another one. Um, uh, Richard, I'll, I'll direct this to you. So um, this came through, or we've had quite a few emails about this recently, um, about long-term lenders obviously taking quite a long time. Um, so what can we do to kind of help in, in the short term? Yeah, I'd, I'd go as, as far as saying that speed won't be an issue from our part. Um, we're, we're working as normal. Um, all, all the underwriters are working from home. Um, lawyers are still working as normal as well. They're working from home, but there's, there shouldn't be an issue um, in, in terms of speed from our point of view. Um, as, as Scott touched on, valuers, um, we, there's so many lenders have actually dropped out of the market um, that the valuers that are actually still um, valuing properties have got excellent um, 
excellent service at the moment we're actually getting reports back quicker so we won't be using covid as an excuse for, for not doing a loan quick enough okay perfect and then we've got a question from chris um so how are we finding the signing of documents as it currently stands are we allowing solicitors, solicitors to advise and witness documents via video calls and what do you think the risks are if so yes thanks thanks for that chris um, so yeah, pleased to say with our, with our sisters, we are taking the, the view, um, allowing them to do Skype calls with the borrowers um, and giving independent legal advice via the Skype call. Um, so the risk there, obviously, they're not actually meeting. Um, as well with the documents, we're, we're taking a view for them to be, be couriered, um, can even have a look at accepting certified copies with the originals to follow, just to accept uh, and speed up the process. So again, we've got no issues there. Perfect. OK, um, I can see that Simon's put his hand up. Um, if you are able to pop your question in the Q&A box and we can definitely answer that one for you. Um, so in terms of people that are overseas, obviously, it's not just us that's, that are in lockdown. Um, so, you know, what are we doing to help our clients that are, that are overseas at the moment? Yeah, so um, we actually had one um, complete a couple of weeks ago where the, the client was actually in lockdown in Italy. Um, so in that sort of situation, you couldn't get to his solicitor, needed to complete on the property. Um, it was an auction purchase. And yeah, we just advised, um, sign the documents over Skype, um, get, get them posted out. And, um, and we managed to complete on the, um, on, sorry, get the witness, the, the uh, solic solicitors to witness the documents over a Skype call. Um, and we managed to complete on that last week. So like I said, the, uh, it won't be an issue for us. Perfect. OK. And then Simon, thank you. So we've got a question from Simon saying uh, for a broker to, to use a new lender, it can be quite stressful, um, which obviously we understand, um, especially being let down in the past with lenders not having money to complete. So what comfort can we provide to a broker about MFS? Yeah, I think I think that's a yeah, I think that's a really good question. Um, I think as well, the way in which we're approaching new inquiries that come into us has slightly changed to how we sort of uh, reviewing inquiries pre-lockdown um, so this also sort of links into which I guess I can see a few people have emailed asking what our maximum loan to value is um, so it's kind of links in links in together so obviously pre-covid our maximum LTV was 75% across all types of, of assets um, as I say we've adapted our approach slightly um, taking a slightly more cautious approach referring to underwrite cases up front and basically have a look at bespoke in each case so by doing this, and what Simon's mentioned, we're going to ask for slightly more information up front than normal, um, but this is allowing us to make a much more informed decision and basically to ensure we're not letting anyone down. And we could quite easily stick to what we we're previously doing and just issue indicative terms. We can do that all day long, but we don't really see the point in doing that if later on down the process it means we're going to move the goalposts um, and, and change it later on down the line. Um, and also that way we're not you know we're not going to look to restrict our loan to value once a valuation report, report comes back because we would have underwritten it day one just feel this is much more important um, i think it adds a little bit of transparency to the introducer and for the borrower um, just be honest and that way you know we're just not going to waste anyone's time so i hope that sort of answers the question okay. yeah i've been just following on from that um I know there are, are a lot of other lenders out there that will just give you issue terms and ask you to pay a valuation fee. And then after you pay that valuation fee, valuation comes back, they underwrite back end, and then you get let down. Um, so for, from our point of view, we just feel that that's unfair, that approach is unfair on the client, because um, then they're going to be losing money on, um, on the valuation, etc. And then we turn around and say we can't do it later down the line. So we just that's why we're asking a bit more information up front, but it just gives you a bit more of, a, of an informed decision. Okay, perfect. And then uh, where he said about lenders not having money to complete, um, obviously a bit of a, a worry. What what can we say about about that? Yeah, so I'd, I'd say we will have no issues whatsoever with funding. Um, we've got multiple different funding lines. We've got private investors, so it will never be an issue of we haven't got enough money to complete that loan. Um, that, that that's never going to happen with us. Um, obviously, like I said, we've been a little bit more cautious um, in terms of LTV and uh, and and what we're doing post COVID. Um, however, we are still looking at the case on its overall merits. So e even if we are restricting LTV somewhere, um, we look at the whole case to see if we can still get the client what he needs. 
Yeah, so again, just to add on what Richard said there, essentially, if we do issue full terms, um, you know, once the valuation report comes back, obviously, providing it is satisfactory, that's it, you know, we'll just move full steam ahead and, and get legals completed. Okay, perfect. Um, and then I think one of the, the sort of last points about Simon's question, thank you for that, is, is about the relationship with our brokers. Um, and I know that one of the things that, that we say a lot um, is that we have direct contact with underwriters. Um, so, you know, how do you guys deal with direct contact with, with our clients and with our brokers? Uh, Richard, do you want to pick Yeah, up? so, um, I mean, you, you've got direct. I mean, we have got some BDMs uh, as well. So if you prefer someone to come around and see you, um, we can possibly do it. Obviously, that's not happening at the moment. Um, all of our underwriters, you've got direct uh, contact with them. We've all got mobile telephone numbers, even um, the, the, the actual underwriters in the office. So you've got direct contact with them and, and they're available all the time. Um, so, yeah, if you've got a deal you want to run by, just literally pick up the phone or send an email through and, and we'll, we'll come back to you straight away with, with a decision. Yeah. Again, just to add on that, you know, we, we do have a team of underwriters that are all working from home. Um, and again, that, you know, the benefit for an introducer speaking to, to the underwriter straight away is you're just going to get an honest and realistic decision up front. Um, you're not going to get someone potentially saying, oh, we can do it, we can do it. And then later on, when it goes to an underwriter, um, it's changing, you know, the underwriters will be clear um, and honest up front. That's it. Yeah, brilliant. Okay. And then we've got um, one from David saying, how long are your valuations valid for given the fast moving situation? Um, so this relating to more recent valves and any valve from pre-COVID. Yes, I think, um, uh, we are, if the valuation was carried out pre-COVID, we are asking the valuer to update the figure. Um, evaluate, our, our valuations tend to um, be valid for 90 days. Um, so, like, if it's within 90 days, then we, 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 we can actually um, use that report. But we are asking if the valuation was carried out um, in February, for example, we're asking the valuer to just update the figure. Okay, brilliant. And then um, another one as well. So obviously, as part of the, the market update, it said that, you know, potentially property prices could come down five to 10%, according to Savills. Um, so how does that affect valuations um, at the moment? Is it, how are the valuers dealing with that? Do you know? Or is it just a case of them being realistic? Or have they given any, um, any sort of guidance towards that? Yeah, I think as you said, it's you know they're, they're all just being being realistic as possible. Um, I think the general you know sort of view in the market is most of the activity within you know property market is it's just on hold rather than cancelled. So you know I think the valuers are sort of taking that in, into account, especially when they're looking at their perhaps you know shorter uh, ninety day valuation figures. Um, we ourselves we don't lend against the ninety day anyway, but um, you know they're just taking the whole current situation into account when they're producing their values. Okay, great. And then um, I think one of the something that we're being asked a lot, um, although it's not it's not on the Q and A at the moment, but I think it's worth noting is is you know how how do we see it coming out of lockdown? You know, is anything going to change for us? So are our USPs going to change? Um, will we be doing anything differently? Yeah. So for, so for us, I think our our the main USP is that we're not a tick box lender. Um, we're, we're a spoke lender, so um, we're always looking at the overall picture of the deal. So, just for example, if um, if, if the borrower came to us and uh, oh, sorry, broker came to us and he had a borrower with five CCJs, we're not just going to turn it around and say, "Oh no, it's it's five CCJs, we can't do the deal," which a lot of other lenders will do. Um, we'll, we'll look at the overall case, we'll look at the asset, um, we're going to look at the what what he's lo looking to use the money for uh, and the exit and and base our decision on the whole thing i mean if everything else is okay why would we not lend to that person um so that's uh, the kind of things that we're looking for um, um i think uh, another usp would be the experience we have on the underwriting team so i've been in the company for years uh, scott's been here four years um so we're always thinking outside the box and our underwriters are all experienced as well and and, and trained to think outside the box um, and then third, I think, I know a lot of lenders will say speed and service, but we have honestly completed deals in, in two days. Um, we haven't really been affected by COVID. Um, so there won't be a delay on our end in, in, in terms of speed and service. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. 
Um, sorry, Scott, did you want to add something there? Or? No, no, I completely, completely agree with everything Richard said there. Okay, great. Um, okay, so if, if anybody's got any more questions, please pop them in the Q&A box. Um, I guess just one and a last one from me. Um, is there any sort of deals that we've done over the course of lockdown um, where we've sort of, you know, really tried to, to do something different to make it work, to, to get it through? Um, you know, you said obviously lockdown and, and COVID-19 isn't really affecting us, but is there anything where we've been able to sort of step in um, where you know perhaps they were having issues or, or otherwise yeah i think i think obviously richard touched on the on the one that was completed for an overseas borrower which mm -hmm. um, i imagine would be would be difficult but managed to get that through very quickly and um, richard also mentioned we had one recently that completed literally within within two days um which is you know fantastic um based on the current situation this was this was achieved by simply just having the relationship the value you could go the same day as we got the uh, the deal in um simultaneously instructed our, our solicitors um so yeah real quick turnaround um i think apart from that I had quite quite an interesting one um go through last week where you know we had to go back to the valuer ask them to take into account um you know the current current situation which had to result in them reducing the, the valuation figure down from what we were looking at which would reduce the loan size based off the new loan to value um, which obviously <laughs> meant that the borrower was slightly slightly disappointed that would affect how much they were going to get get out of it net. But um, we assessed it, we had a look at it. Um, the, the borrower had a few other assets um, in the background within, within their portfolio, and they were quite happy for us to take a you know look at a comfort charge um, over one of their other assets. Um, luckily, they, they allowed us to do so. We managed to, again to get the valuer to go out same day, real quick we real quick sort of turnaround time and getting that report back um, and just meant that we were still able to lend the requested loan size, um, you know, which, which was great. Just meant that we didn't have to disappoint or let anyone down in the end. Perfect. OK, well, I think um, if thank you very much, David, for your feedback. Love that. Have a good day. Um, so if nobody's got any more questions i think we um can wrap it up here if anybody does have any more questions you can email it to us at info at mfsuk.com um or you can give us a call um but yeah so just for the moment i also want to say thank you to bridging loan directory for partnering with us on this webinar we will be doing more so if you do have any other questions keep an eye out for our next webinar where we'll be um sort of looking at how the market is moving on and, and what changes are coming. Um, so yeah, thank you very much. And thanks very much, Scott and Richard. And um, we will sign off. Thank you. Thank you.